Good afternoon, everyone. I want to come on today and show you another little idea for an envelope journal. This is the Envelope Journal Style 3 in the series of envelope journals. This one has a wraparound closure that will allow the, mat, the book to expand as you add things into its pockets. Um, the pages flip open. It's made with six envelopes. And there are six pockets with a signature of white paper in the middle. And like I said, this just wraps around like so, and your closure just tucks in. And that way, if your book expands, your closure still functions. So let's get ready, and we'll start and make this little video. Oh, if you enjoy this kind of videos, you might want to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and make sure to check that click on that little bell so that it tells you when I've uploaded a new video. At least we're going to hope that it tells you that. And have a good time watching. Okay, so to make the envelope style journal, this number three, um, I wanted to start with this box of stationery that I had gotten at the thrift store. Now, when I got it home, I found out that all of the envelopes were sealed shut. So, uh, that would be okay for certain things, and um, that would be fine, I guess, if I was gonna do something else with it, but it also worked perfectly for this particular style journal because of how I want to put the envelopes together. So what I did was I soaked these envelopes and I have six of them. We're going to make this where it has three pockets on one side and three pockets on the other side. And I soaked them in water for several hours until they would open up. And then I soaked the, the lid, lips right here and um, that way all this glue from here came off. Now it did mean that some of the side pockets opened up a little so I'm going to have to glue those shut a, a little bit and that's okay with me. I'm also going to cover this up so it will be it will be fine but if you're starting with envelopes that are just open just put the flap in some water and soak that glue off. The reason being is that we are going to put these together in a manner that if sh humidity should get to the 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 journal, it might um, stick in the wrong place. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to soak off the glue off of our um, flaps. And I just realized that my glue is empty and I'm going to have to go get a new one. So I'll be right back. And you can do this with any style, size envelope. Um, these happen to be, oh, let's see, not quite four. Three and seven eighths by seven and a half. So... Whatever size envelopes you have though, whether you have a letter size envelope or a, a big envelope, this, this all works the same. You just have to cut your papers a little bit different. I'm then going to use this paper pad, which um, is one from Michael's, I think. And I've pulled out some papers. I pulled this one out. I love this because I like cutting these up. And I thought we might use some of this little um, card thingies to decorate our journal with. 
I'm going to go with some sort of simple pages because that way I can decorate them a little bit. Um, that was for the insides and the pockets. Um, we'll see if we want to pull any other papers, but for now, this is what we're going to use. But off of there, we want, I want a little bit of a spine and so that I can see what I'm doing and make it uh, lay down a little bit easier, I'm actually going to score the other side of this. And I only really want an eighth of an inch of spine. So what I'm going to do is, this is at three and seven eighths. I am just going to score this at four inches. So I'm basically, I'm going to score the flap on all of these at four inches. Okay, and I don't know if you can see that completely, but it really is just a small, small space. I just wanted a little bit of a spine. Uh, it's hard for me to fold it when on camera, frankly. But if I fold it, maybe you can see it better. Maybe if I score it better on this side. Right at four inches. So now there are two fold lines. There's the regular one and there's one just an eighth of an inch away. So I'm going to do that to all six envelopes. As I said, we want to make sure that these side flaps are glued down. It doesn't have to be glued down real well. We are going to add um, some cover papers to our pocket, but we do want to make sure that these sides are glued down. Because some of them came a little bit loose in the soaking process. Especially like this one, see? Okay. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be adding a piece to the front of this. And this pocket piece right here on this particular envelope is fine. But if it goes all the way up to the edge, you might want to trim it out right there. Um, I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, but on these, it seems to work just fine. So what we're going to do now is, and this is one of the big reasons that we added that little extra bit of um, score. And we're going to go in here and we're going to put these together. And you notice that the flap, the two pockets are up. Okay, a lot of envelope journals put this flap inside here like this and glue it down. Well, that's all right if you're going to construct it that way and then your glue is okay on that pocket. But I want these both to come up like this. Okay? So I have lots of options as far as how to stick these together. And my thought is that the easiest way it's going to be to use a little bit of score tape and a little bit of glue. And this is just a little eighth inch tape. Okay? And what I'm going to do is just use this little eighth inch piece of tape. And that is if I can get the end to come up. There we go. And I'm going to put this little tiny piece of tape right here along the pocket edge, the envelope edge. Okay. 
I got that one a little too long. It should not overlap the end. Okay. Now, as always with this kind of tape, if you put it down good, it's a little easier to use. So on one envelope, I want that tape on this outside edge. On the next envelope, I want it on the inside edge. Now I'm going to do this a couple of times so you'll be able to see and it'll make a little more sense when we go to do it. Okay, so now because we're going to put these two pieces together, I have that score line that is one eighth of an inch out. I want to line it up with the very top edge where my original fold for my envelope was going to be. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this tape just a little bit okay I'm just gonna pull off just that little bit right there okay and that way I can get this in here I can line it up the way I want it and that's always a hard thing to do you know it's to get them lined up okay now I've got it I've got both of, I've got the eighth inch extra score line that I made lined up with the original score line on the other envelope. I can reach in here. Ah. Well, I said I could. See how much I, no? Okay, let's just pull it off. Tuck it in. It's much easier to do that. Get them lined up the way you want them. And push that down. Okay. Now you notice I did not pull this one off yet. Okay. There's an eighth inch gap between the original lines. Okay. And this one's going to fold back here. Well, now what I can do is I can open this up. My tape is already in there, and I can put some glue in there. That's the old one. Then I can put some glue out here. off that tape and open this back up and now I have two envelopes with a little eighth inch spine attached together see here and they have two pockets okay I'm going to do that two more times so it'll make it a little bit more sense I'm going to set that one aside.
So now we have three sets of pages with a little end, eighth inch spine. Eighth inch spine. See, they're going to just sit on top of one another just like so. Okay? And that way the pockets are lined up together like so. Whoops, I turned that one upside down. Da da. Okay. Now, we want to cover up these pockets. And frankly, it'll be easier to do that before we add. Um, we want to. Before we put the book together, we want to have the pocket pieces in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the height of our envelope, which I told you that earlier, but I've forgotten what it was. Um, it is seven and a half. Okay. Seven and a half this way. Now we don't want our pockets to come all the way up to the center because it needs to be down a little bit so our hands can go in, but this is a little short. So I'm going to go down about, let's see here. If I make the pieces three and a quarter, okay, they'll come up just a little higher because we're going to set the the inserts in just about an eighth of an inch. So if this is seven and a half, I'm going to cut my pieces seven and a quarter. And this is three and three quarters, but I want it down a little, say to three and a... So I'm going to cut them seven and a quarter by three and a quarter. That will make my pieces of paper that are inside um, just a touch smaller than our envelope and yet a little bit open in the middle. So I'm going to start with this fun piece of paper that's kind of ombre down through there. And this is a 12 inch piece. So to make the best use of our paper, I need to cut it seven and a quarter first. I believe. And now I want some pieces that are three and a quarter. Let's use the very straight edge and be sure that we've got it right. These are going to lay in just like so. And you see that way they don't come all the way to the center so you have a little room for your pocket. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to put glue on three edges of this paper. Oh, can you see that? Yeah, make sure I'm still in frame. I'm going to go one. Okay, on those three edges. And I do like this liquid, mono aqua liquid glue. I like it because of the tip. Now, the thing of it is we want to get sure, make sure that this little flap does not catch on our um, when we're putting something in there. So that, and I'm going to glue up here just a little bit and across there. All right, and then I'm just gonna put a little glue in here. This way, we're not gluing our pocket shut accidentally. We're making sure it's glued all the way around the edge on the edges that needs to be done. And I'm just gonna put this on here like so. And you see, okay. Now 
Now we got to do that a total of six times. We have our three pocket page sections here, and we need to m make a little bit of a thumb spot in there. That's, oh, I always try to do that. It's just, um, it just makes it nicer. It looks cuter. Um, it takes away from that straight thing. I have actually marked my hole punch. Let me see if I can get it up there. See the little red marks in there? Um, so what I need to do now is find the center of each of those pieces. And to do that, I find it easiest if I use my centering ruler. And this is just a, it's a Fiskars ruler. They uh, Different companies make them. And when you put it on here and get three and three quarters and three and three quarters, there's a little zero in the middle and you can mark the center. And I need to do that on all six pockets. And now I can take this and I can line up the center punch and the edge punch and get my little... It's not even a half circle. It's it's just a little piece that I punch out. And see how cute that makes those pockets. Now what would you use this kind of little journal for? Well, how about taking it to the grocery store filled with your coupons and your grocery list? Or keeping your receipts for things that you have to return? be a good place to keep um, 
little odds and ends of things that you want to hold on to. Because I'm thinking about that, I'm also thinking that I might want to um, put some paper in the middle of it so that it can keep notes. At the same time, we need to finish our cover. So let's do that because then I can put these away. <laughs> um, I told you that this piece is only three and a quarter wide because we didn't want it coming all the way into the middle. But on the outside, the two pieces for the outside, we actually want to make to fit all the way kind of up to an eighth of an inch from the, the, the spine. So our envelope is three and seven eighths. That means we want seven and a quarter tall by three and five eighths. Seven and a quarter by three and five eighths. And I have these two pieces left, so that's what I'm going to use. This one's already seven and a quarter. Three and five eighths. Okay, now we have to decide how we're going to put this together and which one we want to be our cover. And this one, I think I'm going to put it so that I have one of these pockets, then one of these, then one of these. That means this outside one's going to be my cover. And I am just going to glue these on here just like so. And there will be like an eighth of an inch around them and then an eight about three eighths of an inch in the middle and that's because we have that little spine piece okay this piece is just oh i must have measured just a hair longer so we need to trim that off well, it just wasn't laying in there quite right that's what happens if you don't measure correctly That's better. Now this time we can go all the way around. We're not trying to keep a pocket open. And guys, I'm sorry that these um, tutorial videos get a little long, but that is one thing. It takes a little time to do some of these things. Okay, and remember we're going to do about an eighth of an inch away from all the edges, all of these edges, and a little further from that edge. From the center. Our spine's going to take up a little room. And there we go. 
Let me see how we're going so far. Okay. Now, we need to cut some paper. And, um... Well, that's perfect. We're going to go what for seven and a quarter. See, I'm measuring all the way across here. Seven, and, and I need some extra room on the side. So seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter square. We're going to cut some papers to go in the center of our little book. All right, so now we have our book. Okay, and what we're going to do is we are going to mark our pages, and I'm actually going to mark these separately due to the fact that I need to be able to see right in here when I go to punch my holes. Um, Sometimes you need to hold things together like so. Sometimes it's easier for me to just hold it. But I'm going to use my centering ruler again. And I'm going to find the center. Right along the fold line, I'm going to put marks at zero, and then I'm going to mark it at three. So this is about five eighths of an inch in, and three. You want to make sure you keep your top edge at the top just in case your centering ruler is off just a little bit. So I always just kind of lay them off to the side, make sure that's on the right hand side. Now when I go to this, and you notice I haven't decorated or anything like that because that way if, um, if I happen to pick it up upside down, then at least I haven't messed up my um, design. And then I'm going to find the center of this one. And right in the center of that eighth inch gap that we put in there. I'm going to mark it at zero and again at three because remember I have a little eighth of an inch over where my pages are coming. So um, we want to make sure that we get our holes the same distance apart. And what we're going to do today is we're going to just do a simple three-hole pamphlet stitch. 
So I have these ready. I am not actually going to punch the holes until I get my piece that I'm my cording ready. Um, there again, I've got this as my top. I'm going to sit it off to the side. I decided to use this cord because I want it to wrap around real long. Um, it's a, a nylon. Uh, it's just a nylon cord of some sort that I've had in my stash of stuff and hasn't been used. So, and had a nice purple color that went with everything. So I want it to wrap around a few times, so I'm going to take off quite a bit of cord. I'd rather have too much and cut it off than not have enough. And this really needs to be rolled into a ball, so we're going to just very carefully set it aside. Okay. And we want to get out a needle. And I use a, a tapestry needle. It's got no sharp point on it. It's just a needle. And get this all threaded up. If we get that all threaded up, then it's done and ready. Okay. I have this old telephone book. I'm still hunting a big one. Uh, and I have this lovely little hole punch. And what I'm going to do is I am very, very, very carefully going to punch the three holes in this piece. punch the three holes in our pages. There's a little more density to the pages than there is to the envelope, so the spine. Okay, so today seems to be the day of interruptions. Um, sorry about that. Let's see if we can finish this before it happens again. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to hold all these in place together. I'm going to take my cord and I'm going to go from the outside because I'm going to use my tails of what I have, I'm sewing together as a closure. And I'm going to go through here. Come on now. And I want to pull this so that I have about half of it. And I know you can't see that, but it's about half. It may be a little longer, a little shorter. Um, on each side. Then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go back out through the top hole. And back out through the hole in my covers, pockets. And I'm going to go all the way down. Let me open this up so you can see. All the way down to the bottom hole. Let's bring you in a little. Okay? So now I'm going to go all the way down the bottom hole. And I think I need a little more here. There we go. And I'm going to go in through the pockets. Still on camera? Yeah. Okay. And in through my insert, my signature. 
And then I'm going to go back out through the center hole, making sure that I don't puncture this cord. I need to make sure I'm off to the side of it. Okay. I hope you can see that. Now, I'm going to snug this up a little bit. And as you can see, I have one tail on one side of this long piece and one tail on the other side of it. I am going to pull it a little bit snug, making sure that my cord is in there snugly. And I'm going to tie a knot. And the thing of it is, is that if your ties, your tails, are on each side of that center cord, it will tie it in place. And I am, and that was just one, so I'm going to tie a second one. It's always good if it is a square knot, especially with something as slippery as this. And I am just for good measure going to make a third little knot. Okay. Now, my plan is to take this cord and make it wrap around and tuck. And it just is going to be a perfect little spot. So what I need to do now is put something on the end of my cord that is a little bit heavy. And I'm going to cut it off just a little bit. And I have this cute little button. And I have... It's not a button, it's a bead. And I have some seed beads. And these are size 6 seed beads, so they have a pretty good size cord. And what I'm going to do is, I needed something to get that through there. And for some reason, I don't seem to have a dental floss threader. I thought I did. So I'm going to use some jewelry wire. It's something very thin. It's just something to have to turn into like a needle threader. And I'm going to put it through this little bead and this little bead and then maybe another one of these. And then I'm going to put these through that little loop. I'm hoping you can see the little loop. Let's see here. Oh, no. Oh, it's easiest actually on the black. Okay. Put that through there. And start pulling it down. Okay, so that took us a couple of crazy little work 
working out. I'm actually going to trim that off and put a little dab of glue on there. I'll do that in a few minutes when I can set it aside. But I wanted to show you how it works. Um, as you saw, I just wrapped this around and then you just tuck this through. And if you want it to stay better, you just tuck it through a couple of times. Now, that's a nice closure because as you fill this little guy up, it's going to expand. You know, when you when you start putting all of your whatever's that you're going to put in these pockets, this is going to get fatter and you're going to need to have more cord to wrap around. Okay? So, now the other thing is to think about is that when you're wrapping this cord up, it has you've got two spaces here. It, you're, if you put your design right in the middle, you have to think about the fact that the cord is going to come across the middle. So, I am going to zoom back out just a little bit so you can see. I'm going to, to put some glue on this. First, I'm going to put a little glue on the knot. And then I'm going to glue down here a little bit. And in a little while, when that glue is dry, uh, we can trim that off. In the meantime, I'm going to pull out my decorative paper and find some pieces that I... Oh, that's one I didn't use, which is fine. I like this one, be kind, and life will be gold. And then maybe we can put this little piece up at the top. So let's cut those out.
Those are still a bit damp. I'm not going to go ahead and tuck that in just yet. But there is our finished envelope journal. Let me bring in just a little bit. There you go. And once we get it dry, this dry, then we will be able to um, trim off those ends and then it will just tuck right in there. And this is a pocket journal so that you have great places to tuck lots of things into your journal. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed this. Um, and I hope you'll have fun making one. If you do, remember that I have a Facebook group that we love to see your projects in. Um, there's a link to the Facebook group down below in the um, description box. And I hope you would join us and show off your artwork. But to get ready to go today, I'm going to read you a quote from my 1001 Ways to Creativity little book. Work for a cause, not for applause. Well, that's always a good thing. That is always a good thing. Okay, guys, go have fun. Make some art. Bye-bye.